In this video, we're going to handle what happens when the user is offline. So we created this page, which is the offline page, and we want users to be redirected to this page if they're ever offline. And you can see that it has a list of other articles that have been saved and we can obviously redirect them to those pages because they have been saved to the cache. So we're going to do all of this in the service worker. If you go to you can close everything else. And what we can do is go to this serviceworker.js file. And what we want to start with is this boilerplate. So if you're in your tutorial snippets and you just click service worker boilerplate, let's just copy all of that and paste it here. And I'll quickly just go through what all of this means. So I actually have another video where I explain how service workers work and I also go through how to create like a very boilerplate version and most of this is actually taken from there so if you're really interested i would suggest you go and watch that video but for now um we're just doing two or three things here rather so we have our three main events the install event the activate event and the fetch event so the install event is obviously when the service worker is first installed and what we're doing is calling this self skip waiting function and all this does is make sure that our service worker is always going to be the most up-to-date one. So if we ever push a new service worker, this is going to make sure that the user up, it's updated on the user's side instead of always staying in, um, like waiting to be updated. Then what we're doing is pre-caching. Whoops. Whoa. <laughs> Let's go back. Okay. So then what we're doing is um, pre-caching our files. So you can see here, I should have an array of files that I want to store in the pre-cache. And all this is, is a set of files that I want to be cached anytime the user comes to the site. So regardless of any action the user takes. So like what we did in the um, save article or the post script is an article only gets saved or unsaved depending on user action whereas the pre-cache is just what is cached no matter what so as soon as you visit this page these are the files that are going to be stored in the cache and um, I don't have anything there yet and we'll do that a bit later next we have the activate event and this is of course when the service worker is activated and what I'm doing here is clearing out anything from any old caches so you can see here that i have a version number for my pre-cache so if i ever want to invalidate any old cache or add only new items or remove things from the old cache i can just update this version number and what will happen here is that anything that's in a pre-cache that isn't related isn't the current one gets deleted you can see that here then we have the fetch event and all I'm doing here is essentially console logging that we are, there's a fetch event for this URL, but I'm just going to respond with what you would typically expect, which is just going to the network to get that asset or whatever it is that's being fetched. So we have this service worker file and we should also make sure that it's in our root directory, but we need to actually register it. So if we just close this and we go to the source, global register service worker so this is where we're going to actually register it from our main script so first we're just going to make sure that there's actually service worker in navigator then we're just going to register it so navigator dot service worker dot register and it's at the root directory service worker dot js and then registration let's just console.log yay worker registered and then let's also console log the registration just to make sure everything is cool and let's just see if there's an error yay <laughs> this worker didn't register and then let's also console log the error. So just save the file. Again, make sure that you have gulp running. So yeah, make sure that gulp is running. So especially the JS task, because we're mainly working with JS at the moment. So let's just go back here and let's refresh this page. 
Okay, cool. So we can see service worker has been installed and we have the correct scope for everything. So you can make sure that the scope is actually the roots of the domain. And um, you can see that pre-caching files, all the things that I console logged, you go back here, you can see console logs installed, pre-caching files, all of this. You can see that they're getting properly logged. So if we go back, um, let's refresh again, just to make sure everything is cool. Yeah, so now we can see the fetch events for um, all the different assets here. So you can see that it's trying to get global CSS, ghost SDK, all of that stuff. Cool. So let's go back to our service worker file and you can see that we have some to do's here. So, so there are two things that we want to do here. The first is serve any cached assets or pages from, um, from the cache if it's found there. Um, if not, just try and go to the network. And the second thing that we want to do is if the user is trying to navigate to a page and they're offline, redirect them to the offline page if it isn't already in the cache. So we're going to start with the first task, which is to just intercept any fetch event and make sure that we're checking for things in the cache if they are there. And if they are there, get serving them if they're not just going to the regular network. So let's go back here. And what we want to do is just delete this. And instead of responding with a fetch event or a fetch request, what we want to do is check to see if anything matches um, the request from the cache. So e dot request. But then let's look at the response. Cool. So if there's a response, oops. What we want to do is console.log found in cache. And what we want to do is actually return the response. So let's actually just call this cached response, right? So if there's a cached response, we want to return the cached response. If there isn't, let's just do the regular fetching. So fetch e dot request return fetch e dot request. Okay, so you can see what we're doing here is we're responding to this fetch event with first checking if there's anything in the cache that matches the request that um, the browser is making. And if there is, we're going to return that cache response. If there isn't, we're just going to return, we're just going to do the regular thing and go to the network. So let's go back here. So this is an article. Well, actually, what we should first do is refresh the page. And what we'll see is that if we go to application service workers, um, this should hopefully be the updated version. And sometimes you can never really tell. Okay, because I have update on reload, it should probably be the updated version, right? Well, let's test and see if this works. So seeing as this article is in cache, what we can do is simulate offline and if the page loads then yeah cool so you can see that the page is loaded obviously the styles aren't loaded yet and um that is because we haven't also cached certain assets and that's what we're going to do in the next video so all we're trying to do now is cache the actual pages like the page content so let's go back online and yeah we can see that now anything that has been cached we go to our articles cache we can see that they're here and if we're offline we'll still be able to access those particular pages but the second thing we need to do is actually first of all cache the offline page and that needs to happen as soon as the user comes to the site so that needs to form part of this pre-cache that we have here and then secondly we need to route to it if the user is trying to go to a page that isn't already in the cache so let's start with first saving the offline page, right? So if you remember up here, we have our pre-cache files and all we need to do is add that offline page. And um, if I go to the offline page here, page offline, you remember that we had this uh, offline CSS. So let's go back and just add that as well. So that just forms part of that offline page. We need to make sure that the page and whatever assets relate to that page 
are in the pre-cache as well. So um, if we go back here, let's refresh and let's just make sure that it's actually there. So you can see, yes, now it's the CSS and the offline page. So if we go to the offline page and we are to go network offline, this should work. Yeah, cool. So the offline page itself is also visible. However, you'll notice like what I just did. If I were to go to the home page or any page that isn't cached, we're still getting this. And ideally what we want to do is reroute the user to that offline page if they're ever trying to go somewhere that isn't cached. So let me go back online. Awesome. So we can do this here. Let's go back to our service worker um, fetch event. So you'll remember we checked if something is in the cache. If there is, we're returning it, right? And else we're just fetching. But what we want to do here is make sure that if there is a fetch response, then yeah, return the fetch response, right? But if there isn't, so if there's like some error, this is where we want to, let me just format this, yeah. This is where we want to redirect the user to the offline page. But we need to make sure that what they're actually requesting is a page and what they're not requesting is like some CSS or an image or something. Because if you remember, let's go back here and look at our console logs, where there's fetch events for a bunch of things like global CSS, profile, global JS, a lot of stuff. And we only want to intercept this this um fetch fetch event and we only want to intercept it and redirect to an offline page if what the user is trying to navigate to or what the browser is trying to fetch is actually another page so if it's like index.html or something along those lines so what we should do is first check to make sure it is so let me actually just is html page so I'm just going to copy this because I have something like this. So we want to make sure that dot method, first of all, it should be like a get method, right? And then um, request dot headers dot get set dot includes text HTML. Right. So we're just trying to make sure that this is an HTML page. And if it is an HTML page, right, um, turn caches dot match and we're going to be offline page instead. Right. Okay. So just to recap, we're first checking the cache. If there is no response, we're going to try and fetch over the network. If there is a response, we we return it. If there isn't a response, we make sure that what is being fetched is actually an HTML page. And if it is, we're going to redirect them to this offline page. So let's try and see if this works. So first let's refresh. Then, yeah, you can tell when a new service worker takes over by this activate event. Right, so I'm gonna refresh again because the new service worker was just activated. So you refresh again, at least I think you do. Sometimes work, sometimes doesn't. You refresh again to make sure they're getting the up-to-date one. So let's try this. So we're offline, I refresh for whatever reason, it's not working, whoops. Uh, refresh, okay, let's look at console. This could be because the service worker is not the correct one yet. So let's do update on reload, refresh this, and then let's try and go offline again. Refresh or, okay, let's see. Let's actually try and go to another page that maybe exists or not. Okay, hmm. Um, let's see. So I'm not sure exactly why it's not working. Let me come back here. 
e.request.method with get and e.request.headers headers oh man is that really what caused this problem <laughs> oh god this is this sucks so much <laughs> okay let's try again oh god this is the worst um okay yeah so activated that shows that there's a new one um i wonder if it'll work now um okay so let's try and be offline and refresh this okay cool it's working that was i cannot believe that was the problem anyway it's actually working so now if you try and go to a page like the home page and you're offline you're be instead being served this offline page and you can go and view any articles that um are actually saved for you offline and anytime you try and go anywhere else you're going to be served this page instead so next what we're going to do is handle this ugly situation that we're having here so we're going to be handling assets like css and js on these pages and how do we cache them when do we cache them all of that so that's going to be in the next video